The Nigerian Sin Diaspora Commission has advised Nigerians living in China to be careful and take necessary precautions while staying indoors for now. And we might not have heard the last of the controversial hate speech bill as the sponsor has disclosed that it is still alive. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. Welcome. Now, despite the outbreak and spread of the coronavirus, Nigeria's Ministry of Foreign Affairs seems to have no plans in place to rescue Nigerians residing in China. This was suggested when Mrs. Abike Dabudi Erewa, Chairman and CEO of the Nigerian Diaspora Commission, advised Nigerians living in China to be careful and to stay indoors for now. Joining us to have a conversation on this are two gentlemen. I'll start with Kayo Deshwebi, political analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And of course, we have um, barrister Jimmy Abbey. A pleasure My to pleasure have being you with company. you today. Okay. Um, we have last a fever locally, but we'll get to that conversation in a bit. Let's start with uh, the position. It's already in Africa. We hear it's in Kenya. Coronavirus has spread and it's spreading really fast. Uh, now the commission is saying people should stay indoors, um, don't go out and all of that. And the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is saying there are no plans as of now to evacuate Nigerians. Over 10,000 Nigerians, that's 2014 that we had the statistics, are still there. What's your reaction? Let me start with you. Well, it's typical. It's becoming typical of, uh, unfortunately, of uh, foreign missions abroad. I uh, recall some times ago when there is, there is a similar occurrence outside the shows. Uh, the reaction of a, society, of a country or a government to such situation is always like uh, un uncaring or uh, they act as if they don't care about uh, what the welfare of, of Nigerians in the diaspora is. For me, a sensible uh, or a serious government will be doing what the British government is doing presently, communicating with governments of, the, of, the, of China mm -hmm. and looking at how to move their citizens out of that place, uh, what the United St uh, States of America is doing. But unfortunately, there is no plan. I think we've gotten uh, information about this uh, coronavirus for more than a week now, and that's an ample time for a serious government to... They, they have, in, in, to their credit, some would say, they've issued um, a public alert, I've forgotten what they call it, this actual word that they call it now, um, advisory uh, to the public as regards the coronavirus. Yeah, I agree with you. The advisory barely takes and her to draft up, or maximum 24 hours. Now, what happened beyond that? Uh, what happens beyond just drafting advisory? What about the life of these individuals? So you see that the value that we place on Nigerians has been little. Nobody cares. Unfortunately, it's so unfortunate that we are not really particular about the welfare of our citizens, even those within the shores. How do we treat them? So it, it goes to tell you how the government of Nigeria is really, really caring, shows care or shows uh, uh, empathy, sympathy uh, or, or concern about the welfare of Nigerians outside the shores. Let, let me bring you in, Barrister. The, yeah. the, the, the commission and the ministry says they're monitoring developments there and they're in touch with the WHO as to know uh, what the latest um, uh, information is. But beyond monitoring, as at this time, we have the U.S. has already evacuated some of its citizens and sure. they're planning to go back. We have Germany, we have Canada, we have the rest of them doing stuff like that. Beyond monitoring, don't you think it is time for the, over, the, the number of Nigerians living in that country to be evacuated? Yes, I, I think um, the government should have done more and should be doing more. Uh, but you can see that uh, our government hasn't, and this is not, I'm not just talking about this government, but over the years you have seen this kind of um, uh, laissez-faire attitude uh, to, to governance, a situation where um, government, government doesn't take the issues, you know, affecting the citizen citizenry very seriously. I, what I expected at this time uh, is that Niger uh, Nigerian government, you know, through its agencies like the ones you mentioned, should be communicating with Nigerians over there and also making arrangements to airlift Nigerians 
back to Nigeria because there are some Nigerians who cannot, not because they don't want to, but who cannot, uh, you know, leave immediately, but who would want to. You see, you saw what happened in South Africa when there, there was that um, is issue, there was that issue of xenophobia um, until one Nigerian uh, individual decided to uh, do, take up the gauntlet and do something about it. There wasn't really anything apart from uh, statements um, being issued you know, from government quarters. So I expect that more would be done, more should be done. And uh, now this this is about Nigerians over there. Now, what about Nigerians who are here? Um, how much is being done to protect Nigerians who are here? Yeah, yeah yes, I, I was gonna I was gonna come to that. We did try just to say that we did try to get the. Uh, Abike Dabiri, that's the CEO of the Diaspora Commission, but we, we couldn't get her uh, to talk to us. She, couldn't, she didn't respond to calls at the time uh, we had to come live. But we'll keep trying to reach her to see if there is any updates that we might have missed. But for now, there was a, a statement by the Ministry of Health. The Minister of Health has come out to say that they've set up an inter-multi-sectional uh, committee to enhance surveillance. They have started enhancing surveillance at the five international airports that we have, and uh, they are hoping that they will do other things. They're also looking at the state governors in these five areas because, I mean, most of the, the, the one of the ways it can come into the country is through uh, the airwaves. Would you say that this um, is enough? They've also issued emergency numbers that can be called beyond that. Yes, is there more? Uh, beautiful, beautiful nomenclature beautiful idea um but um we when we talk about implementation because this is where these things are important um you need to uh, you you should expect that the, um, the things they have mouthed you know should be would be implemented i expect that um you know a, a, a number of agencies like the, the, the minister mentioned that a number of agencies would be involved in this uh, not just uh, agencies under the ministry of health but other uh, bodies you you have the customs you have uh, the migrations, I, I expect, especially the migrations, you know, should be involved in this process to ensure that people, uh, you know, people who are suspected, uh, you know, of having this uh, the, this particular, um, uh, you know, disease, you know, do not come into the country. And if they do, if they do that, they are quarantined before they get into uh, the, gen the, uh, the general society, the public. So you expect that a lot more should, uh, you know, be done. And the government should actually uh, be taking the front uh, role in doing this. Okay. As at 2014, uh, okay, you wanted to say something? Yes, I wanted to put in. Um, I, I, I was just thinking about it this afternoon, and I just hope that by virtue of mercy or grace of God, we don't have to have battle coronavirus in Nigeria. I was going doing a recap of what we've gone through with Lassa fever. Yeah, well, yeah, I was actually going yeah. to have us talk a little more about because that is our own health emergency yeah. as at this point. We have that already. And how, how, how well are we faring with that? Not to talk of the one that we don't, we don't even have as much as information about it. We are not talking about uh, the emergency procedure. Uh, we have a borders borough. Someone could have come in. I just got this afternoon that uh, some, a student in Kodova already contracted, yes. uh, you know, and yeah. is being isolated. And so we don't know how many persons are going to come through the unofficial means, the routes, you know, around the borders. So the government, unfortunately, from what I've seen, they are not being proactive enough. I think we have ample time. By now, we should be seeing communications. National uh, uh, Orientation Agency should be on, on TV on a daily basis, telling, informing Nigerians about this virus, this uh, how to uh, mitigate against, how to sustain you, emergency duty. I'm to, we are supposed to take this as an emergency issue, but nothing is happening. We're just having advisories and uh, communication, just mouth and words. We need to do more. The government need to do more. The government need to show huge level of seriousness. Just last week, I was just passing by the by the by the by the airport in Murizala Mohammed, and I think around, uh, if I'm not mistaken, early in the morning, the, the immigration officers were just gisting. 
the machine there that was capturing as people were coming in was there, but those people were supposed to be monitoring it. They were just in talking and all those things, and just two of them were there. So let's, ima let's imagine that someone with this ailment actually came in. How will you track such? There is no level of seriousness. We need to do beyond this. Okay, um, still on the coronavirus, before we move on to talk about, you know, how we're handling our own local situation here, the um, Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, mm. we understand this morning in Abuja, sealed off a supermarket over a confirmed allegation, that's how the papers are reporting it, of illegally imported seafood from China that was delivered uh, to the country for fears of coronavirus. Uh, uh, there are thumbs up for this move, but there are also those who are saying we're chasing shadows. What do you say? Oh, well, well, beyond the coronavirus, I think this is um, uh, something we should give thumb, thumbs up. Uh, when government agencies um, work, actually uh, perform their duties, we should actually commend them. Um, we know that a lot of this, you know, goes on around. You you see factories that um, you know don't go through the regular uh, process of monitoring, but you know, by government agencies. You see factories um, that government agencies help to cut corners with respect to um, laboratory analysis and other things of their products. So a lot, a lot happens. You or even in supermarkets, a lot. I, I know that if if uh, more, you know, if they if they actually. Uh, investigate more there are so many more supermarkets that you find things like this um, but now uh, it seems that something is being done and we would expect that more of this you know happens I, I, I don't want to uh, uh, limit this to just the coronavirus because there are several other diseases you have cancer you have um, several other uh, you know ailments that people can contract by you know taking on wholesome products and you expect that government and uh, its agencies should be up and doing and ensure that the, because uh, uh, for everybody who um, gets an ailment, one person could be related to that. I mean, this is something, it has to be an, an issue of enlightened self-interest at this point. That Because one person might be related or even be a, 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 the official of government, you know, who may suffer this. So people have to take government job, you know, as, as a responsibility, as something they have to discharge, you know, to the best of their ability, you know, uh, because anybody could be affected. Um, NCDC has uh, issued a statement, part of that statement, um, press conference, uh, and the comment they made was that they're working with a Chinese um, embassy in Nigeria to uh, delay the return of those who have traveled, the mm. Chinese citizens who have uh, uh, traveled for the lunar holidays, and they're saying that they're going to, I mean, there's some response. Do you think they can really stop um, these people from coming back into the country? Definitely. The government has powers to delay yeah, because one of the ways to delay that is their visa. They can't come into the country without visas. You know, one they already had visas. Even, I mean, people have booked their flight, they've planned their journey. They, um, I'm traveling on Sunday. I'm coming back in two weeks' time. And visas get current, uh, get uh, uh, cancelled mm -hmm. per time. And one thing I know the US has done is to quarantine people, restrict them to their homes to make sure that they don't mingle with the public, you know, for a period of time. Now, uh, what the government is presently doing, saying they want to delay, they are talking to the government of China to delay their uh, coming back to the country, is laudable and we must encourage it. But beyond that, they must ensure that some of these uh, citizens who are not, who didn't go to China directly, who are coming from other countries, are also delayed. This uh, uh, disease has been, has been reported in so many other countries other than China. So we must ensure that not focusing on China or Chinese alone, we must also ensure that we broaden the spectrum beyond people coming from China. Okay, let's, let's look at our local challenge. We have Lassa fever. Mm -hmm. This is, I said, I mean, you, you, you know the taste of the pudding is in the eating, yeah, right? Yeah. Yes, this is a, a sort of infectious disease as well. And so far, it is in 19 states of Nigeria. The death toll has risen to 41, um, even though they're trying to make an, I mean, a comparison with 2019 and this year, um, 41, 20, 42. What's the difference? One more and they will hit that figure. Uh, that's by the side. 41 people have died. I mean, 
What's your take on how we've been able to manage the spread of Lassa fever in Nigeria in preparation for something bigger? I, I, don't, think we, I, I don't think we've done enough. If you go out on the streets and ask questions, I, I doubt you uh, that you'd find um, uh, you know, a good number of people that know. And I'm talking about the urban areas. I'm talking about the, the, you know, the cities. I, I doubt that you'll find a good number of people who even know about the Lhasa virus. Now, uh, now that's, that is for people who actually know anything about it. Now, what about prevention? What, how much do people know about the prevention? How much do people know about the symptoms? How much do people know about the treatment you know, that you know, it should be administered? So there's a lot. And I don't think a lot, enough information is being passed out there. What is the Ministry of Health doing about informing the public, about sending out the relevant information to the public? Of course, he has mentioned the National Orientation Agency. I think they also have, you know, a some uh, work to do, you know, in terms of passing the re relevant information out there. Also, the Ministry of Information. These are these are, you know, ministries and departments that have, you know, critical role to play in ensuring because information is power. I think if we have, uh, you can see, you could see what happened during the uh, Ebola virus thing. Information was out there. Information was, you know, so much out there that even in, in worship places, you had, um, you know, the, the, the priests, you had the, the imams, you know, informing people, telling people, you know, how to go about this. Please don't shake hands. Please, uh, once you're leaving, please uh, use, the, use the sanitizer and all that. You had it in schools. You had it everywhere. You had this information all, uh, you know, out there. But I, nothing that much is being done about this Lassa fever. And I expect that government should do so much more. We haven't even scratched the surface. We are just counting numbers and, you know, the comparing numbers that whether it's less than what we had. No, even one person is enough. It's a, it is enough to, uh, you know, have it as an emergency because the, the propensity, the likelihood of it getting to other people is so much that we shouldn't take it as something we shouldn't take it casually the, we have five centers currently for diagnostics um, the NS um, the Center for Disease Control says they they're planning to have more this since I think that the, the as of 2012 we had just one so if you calculate in less than how many years we have five yeah. but is it enough considering the population of over 180 million Nigerians. You know, when you were talking, you said they are planning to have more. We have an emergency on our hands, and we are still at the planning stage. Now, it's not like we are envisaging this to fall on us. It's already here. So we should have left the portion or the stage of planning. We should be at the portion where we talk about doing. I expect that every state of the federation should have a diagnostic uh, 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 capacity to diagnose uh, this uh, ailment. You know, yeah. have a quarantine uh, station for every case. You know, and ensure that emergency response uh, uh, procedure is very close to the people as much as possible. I expect that government should have set up a, 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 a mobile emergency uh, buses to talk to people. Those are the things that we saw when Ebola uh, virus break up. You know, break out then. I, 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 I can recollect the, the response of the government of the day then. To, you know, they, they sensitized people, they met with community leaders, they went to hospitals, they kept on orientating people about it. And that was the reason why they were able to come out of that challenge. But unfortunately, unfortunately, I haven't seen that much energy in this dispensation. It's so sad. And we are not just talking about uh, challenges of, uh, we are talking about 41 persons dead now. Now, about, I think over 200 persons had been reported to have still been quarantined and all yeah. those things. And the number, those are the people who we had seen. What about people who had made contact and are still floating around? And Nigeria is a population of about 200 million people. So you, you look at it, the, the effort of government vis-a-vis -vis the impact when this thing 
actually begins to manifest, they are not doing enough. And I plea, I'm using this opportunity to plead with the government, they need to do more. The Minister of Health need to de uh, 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 declare emergency on health in Nigeria. They need to make sure that the clinics in Nigeria are very functional. We have thousands of them. What are they doing? What is, can people get information about this virus? Are the clinic staff going now to reach out to hospitals, to, to schools, to uh, uh, estates, to inform people? We are talking about even urban centers now. What about the villages? These people are still even eating this uh, bush meat and all. All these things that could cause this ailment, people are still eating it. People are still so touching them. Both of you have hammered Honestly. on enlightenment. And um, we, we, there seem to be a tendency for a recline once we get through a phase of the outbreak, um, as of 2019, after the Lassa fever, we didn't hear much about you know, what the virus is, how it is spread, what we need to do to keep our environment clean. And now that it has come again, we're talking about what can the government do to ensure sustained awareness on Lassa fever and the, 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 that rat that spreads it? Yes, I think um, what the government should do um, is to ensure that its agencies work to capacity. Now, um, there are some, uh, all these agencies have their work cut out for them already. But it's unfortunate that these things, they wait for the emergencies, you know, to happen, you know, before they even start doing anything. So I expect that the agencies of government should uh, stick to their roles perform those rules which they have because they have the duty of informing of make ensuring that um, you know the healthcare facilities are optimal are in optimal capacity and also you also expect that um, funding you know should also be available to ensure that these things work because when you also talk about the agencies you also you know uh, uh, note that some of these agencies are not as funded as they should uh, what is our health budget what is the budget for health Health, you know, annual budget for health. So you also expect that government should ensure that there is adequate resource, you know, for health, uh, allocation, proper resource allocation to health services so that uh, these things will, can go on, uh, re you know, regularly. It's not something that uh, it should happen only during emergencies. It should be an ongoing thing. So. Yeah. Okay, uh, the, the NMA has come out in condemnation of the um, preparedness to manage emergency, especially for infectious diseases, and uh, they are saying that more needs to be done. Uh, but I want to turn the table and ask, do you think that maybe the NMA, that's the Nigerian Medical Association, can do more than, you know, issue statements if there is something else they can do to pressure the government to up their game and improve facilities in hospitals? Uh, the Nigeria Medical Association can only plead with the government, unfortunately. Uh, I say that because what is even the capacity of doctors we have in our society? Every now and then, our medical staffs, officials, actually move out of the country for greener pastures. So at every little opportunity, what is the welfare of medical uh, uh, practitioners? In Nigeria, they are not encouraged enough. The capacity is not there. In Nigeria, I think a doctor attends to an average of about a thousand persons per annum. Whereas abroad, it's quite cheaper. Yeah. It's quite lower. Now, what I'm saying is, they can only play with the government. The government will always do whatever it is they want to do. Bulk of these decisions are taken by politicians. These politicians don't use Nigerian hospitals. They actually go outside the shores of the country to get their health. Unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, you know and, and, and it's aided by even the first citizen of the country you know these are people who benefit from uh, uh, medical tourism so you, you wouldn't get so much uh, productivity when you say uh, they should push the government the government will only be pushed when they also benefit from it now whatever medical uh, 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 budget we have or allocation they don't get a piece of, a pick of it if you look at the budget of the yeah. uh, the hospital in the in Aso Rock alone you'll be shocked that it's far bigger than a lot of the hospitals in countries. So, so, so I, I'm not saying that we, we can't do more, you know, or we can't uh, get more from government, but I think that even the medical association can only plea with the government, and we'll continue to plea 
the government, I hope right. they are listening to us. They Thank should you. be sincere with the citizenry. I tell you, this society is ours. This society is the whole of Nigerians. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for your thoughts on the program so far. All right. Up next for discussion is the controversial hate speech bill. It's still very much with us. Stay with us.